What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Harsh Truth. My co-pilot today is Aaron Glacier. I'm your pilot today, Frank Gilbert. Just want to send a shout out to my friends, Haley, Kim, Brom, and Sean, all my friends of the Outcasts on Facebook. In this video, we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman joining Flashpoint. So stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, so Wonder Woman confirmed in Flashpoint. Big deal. Yep. <laughs> Woohoo! I'm not entirely surprised. <laughs> they're they're trying to get they're trying to take her success and rub it off on the rest of the DCEU. Yeah. So, whatever. I I just worry that they're going to try to smash too much stuff into one movie when this movie really needs to be about Flash, his beginnings, as much of his origin as you want to show. Right. I don't know if they're going to actually show his origin, getting struck by lightning, being can. turned into a metahuman, all that. I don't think they can at this point because they've already established him as a character unless it's going to be a bat. Like, literally, unless it's going to be like Wonder Woman and the movie takes place entirely before anything happens. As far as the cinematic universe goes for DC, her arrival into the modern times was with Batman vs. Superman. She kept a low key from World War II to now, specifically... To avoid people finding out that she was, you know, as old as she is and not aged all this time. So her coming into the limelight, her coming out as a hero, happened in Batman vs. Superman. We've got our prequel. At the end of the prequel, we see a thing with, you know, Batman sent her the original photo or whatever the fuck, you know. And now we're caught up with her. We don't need another past thing with her. Yeah, but like I said, it depends <laughs> on... It depends on when, you're, when in her story she's going to be showing in Flash, because Flash oh, is going yeah, to be yeah. set. I see. Flash I see is going to be set in modern times. Yeah, it's going to be set today or whenever you know the movie comes out. So the question is: Is does it take place before Justice League? Is is what happens in Flash going to bring him to the Justice League? Is you know, obviously he's part of whatever crazy thing happens in the future because he comes back through that wormhole or whatever it is and talks to Bruce after that dream sequence and says whatever he says about saving Lois or whatever. Right. Uh, so, but uh, I think, honestly, I think the whole reason she's in there, they're just trying to take some of that positive energy that she's got after her first movie did as well as it did. And they're just trying to, like, spoon a little bit of it here and there around the DCEU so that they can help the rest of their movies. Yeah, they, you know, and it's it's their own fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they've made nothing but crap thus far. So, so really, I, I just think it's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to help, like, use her success to kind of feed Flash. When the reality is, they should be just concentrating on Flash's story because there's also this rumor that Aquaman's going to be appearing in Flash somehow. Right. And, and you brought up earlier we were talking about is it going to be this whole the uh, big war thing that's going on between the Amazonians and the Atlanteans? Right. Which I think it's just not a good time for that to happen. Yeah, it, <laughs> they're not. You mentioned you mentioned earlier that it's Flashpoint is the civil war of DC, and it is happening in our what fourth movie? Too too fucking soon. Oh, way too soon. Way too fucking. And then soon. and they're using it for the wrong reasons. I think they're trying to use Flashpoint to kind of reset the DCEU for whatever problems may or may not be coming. You right. Know, the potential loss of Ben Affleck. Trying to get past the not-so-great movies that are like Suicide Squad and, and Batman vs. Superman, that you're already trying to use Flashpoint to reset what you're doing rather than using it as the big storyline the that way that Marvel be. used Civil War. Right. But it, It's not know, going to live up to what it could have been, and then they're never going to be able to use it again. Yeah, and so you're, you're basically blowing the, the biggest wad you have to try to reset everything and get back to the beginning so you can take another shot at things and you may as well just reboot everything. Yeah, you might as well just not use that and just reboot everything. And still have Flashpoint to use farther down the line when you've yep. gotten the story right, when the characters are all good, when you've actually made good film, individual films with each character. Right. I mean, you managed, you managed to make a good one with, with Wonder Woman. Yeah. I, Flash remains to be seen. That, that's had its problems. I don't know. I like that. I like that. At least the actor they've got playing Barry Allen. Oh, I do. I do. Uh, Aquaman has had fewer problems. At and least I fewer that have been reported. Love the actor who's <laughs> playing actor. I do like Jason Momoa. I think he's going to make a great crazy Aquaman. Awesome. Yeah, visually he's going to make a cool Aquaman. I mean, we still have to see what the movie's going to be like. 
Yeah. And they're, I think, in post production on that now. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're actually done with principal photography now. They're just yeah. basically, basically the editing. They desperately need to to get these stories right and to get yes. their universe together. Oh yes. And you know now they're talking about de-emphasizing the uh, the shared universe. Why? I mean, you may as well call that a reboot. Right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make it so that everybody's stuff only happens to them and doesn't affect anybody else, but we're going to have all the characters from every movie in every movie that happens. Yeah, it's... It's I, just we're going to shift focus of who's the main character with each movie. Now, you see, I'm all, for, I'm all for the individual movies being about the individual characters, so if it's going to be... But it has to affect... The, it has to be part of a bigger picture. It yeah. can't just be its own big picture. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it, but I mean, and we, you know, you talk about the way Marvel does it. I mean, you don't even under, You don't even know sometimes until two or three movies... Past the, you know a particular film, right? How something that happened in Iron Man two affects the larger universe. Sometimes you don't understand that, but but Marvel's done a great job of kind of crafting all these things into this web that kind of that kind of look that when you step back and see the thing as a whole, you're like, oh man, all this stuff kind of works perfectly. It's perfectly connected. DC is just I don't understand the point of de-emphasizing the connection to the larger universe when that's what you want. Right. You want to be able to for something to happen in you know in the Batman whenever that movie actually gets written and made whoever's working on that I mean stop watching us and get back in your typewriter and make sure it yep. happen but but you want you know the little the little line here to feed into something that happens in the next movie you want to watch this movie and think back a couple of movies to something somebody said and say oh okay now that makes a little bit of sense yeah. Marvel does that DC trying to step away from that it means that they don't have confidence in the people that are crafting their story. And if you don't have confidence in the people that are crafting your story, then guess what? You've already failed. Yep. I, I, don't, I don't understand how how you can say we're just de-emphasizing this shared universe and we're just going to keep all these characters separate until we want to get them together in one movie or to, to face one bad guy, whether it be Darkseid or, or whoever. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Right. And, and again, it, it, it seems like everything they do is just anti, they just want to be the anti-Marvel. They just don't yeah. want to do it the way Marvel's doing it. Well, Too bad. Marvel's making money. To. Yeah. Do you have something against money? Because... <laughs> I mean, because, and, and I've said it before, Marvel ha Marvel made the template. You may not yeah. like following Marvel's template, but that shit works. I mean, if somebody I didn't like gave me a template to make a lot of money, I'd be like, well, I think you're an asshole, but you're making a lot of money, so I might I might look at what you're doing and say, you know, how can I, you know, what from this can I pull and, and kind of do that for myself. And DC, just de-emphasizing the shared universe, to me, is them giving up. Why not just go ahead and make separate storylines all together for Batman here and Superman here, Wonder Woman here and Flash here and whoever. Why not just keep them all separate and don't do a Justice League thing at all? Yep. I mean, if, if you're having that much trouble crafting your story and, and kind of having everything meet at this one spot to where you can have a real Justice League movie, just separate it all. I mean, if you're, if you're having that much trouble with it, separate it all. Take that off, take that, pro, that that little factor out of the equation and at least make the individual storylines for the individual characters good. Yes. If you I mean because if you I mean cause the whole point is the Justice League. I mean the whole the whole point of Iron Man, the very first movie, was to set us on the course towards Avengers. Yep. And they did that the way they needed to do it to make it awesome. DCs still are just like, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Well, you should know by now. Yeah. I mean, how long has it been? Quit since juggling been? chainsaws. It's how you cut off a hand. Yeah. How how long has it been since <laughs> Man of Steel came out? Well, years. Yeah. I mean. You, you, and I've said it before. You should have had a plan before that movie came out yep. that we're gonna okay, we're gonna come out with Man their, their and plan. We're gonna play Batman <laughs> into it a little bit here and there, and then we're gonna have Batman versus Superman. And then we're gonna have Wonder Woman. They had the movie. shittiest version of a. They had a plan, but they had the shittiest version of a plan. We're gonna see whether or not Superman's gonna sell. Yeah. To decide. Superman is always gonna sell because we don't know if Superman's <laughs> gonna make money. No shit. I mean, come on. I think they, they were concerned with a reboot because they kind of dropped the ball with Superman Returns. But the, the reason they dropped the ball with Superman Returns was because it was a sequel to the original trilogy. If you're going to take and say, we're not going to make another Superman because we don't want to shit on Christopher Reeve's Superman, and then you turn around and make another Superman, and then you shit on that by fucking this dumpster fire that is DC. <laughs> what is, what, I don't understand. Look, and, and, you know, I've said it before, you know, on, on this channel, that they need to just, they need to pay attention to how they're crafting the story. They need to be very yeah. careful about how they're putting, you know, where they're putting their pieces. You know, and how they're, they're getting to play it. people. Well, and, and the casting, well, the primary casting 
has not been bad. I mean, and I it, was, no, well, you're right. The primary casting hasn't been bad, but when we get to a point where it's like we've got our primary cast together and somebody wants to leave, you probably should have ironed that out before you fucking put him in the movie. Well, I'm never, I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, as far as Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman are concerned, I think the casting is just fine. Don't like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Just no, don't like I would have rather seen, seen uh, what's his name? I'm a... Uh, uh, Dude from Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, I, Brian Cranston. Yeah, but, Cranston I mean, would have made perfect. Whatever. I mean, he he for whatever reason wasn't available, didn't want to do it. That's fine. But Jesse Eisenberg's casting was a mistake. Yeah, I like Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. I like anything Lawrence Fishburne is in. Yeah, I don't think I've seen anything that's not amazing. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> or, uh, Amy Adams is, is is Lois Lane. I'm like meh. I think she did. A, I think she did a good I, job as Lois. I she's she's okay. I'm not, I'm not overly impressed. But I'm she pissed. was not the part of the movie that stood out to me. I did not cringe when she came on screen as much as I cringed when Jesse Eisenberg came on right. screen. They did a good job with Olsen, Jimmy Olsen. I'm kind of sad that he's that not. Was, I'm sad that he's gone forever now. But they did not do a good job with Jimmy Olsen because they had a good actor not, for him. He's not the Jimmy Olsen. He's not the photographer that that follows Clark around. He was in the movie for about three and a half seconds. He. It has like three lines that are funny in the scene, that are kind of important in the scene and funny in the scene, but they don't really they have any, anything yeah. to do with the the broader picture. So they kind of they kind of threw his character away, which I think is just yeah. Funny. I mean, so and that's the other thing. And on top of that, I mean, it's Jimmy Olsen. He's kind of an iconic character as well in, in the Spider in the uh, Superman storyline. How do you just kind of throw him in there and be like, hey, here's Jimmy Olsen, and just be like, all right, whatever, then throw him back in the shit heap. We're done with him. That's. Yeah. That's really silly. That's <laughs> just—it's kind of dumb. You're not—you're not telling a good story here. You're and so, and you know, you're all you're doing is you're hoping that you can take this great thing that was Wonder Woman. You can take Flash, which is still kind of an unknown. You just kind of go, there's some good some good juju over here. Okay, now here's Flash. You see, it's got Wonder Woman in it. Yeah. So you should like this movie now because you liked Wonder Woman. Nah, just—you guys got to get with it over yeah. in DC. You guys have really just got to take a step back. And say and just and say okay, we're gonna lay out our story step by step from here on out. It's gotta be good. We gotta have the right writers. There's this rumor floating around that they may be trying to suck Joss Whedon in. I thought that was confirmed already for Justice League. I, well, for Justice League, he, he as far as I have heard, he is not committed to anything DC past Justice League. I'm still surprised that Joss Whedon is in DC now, but I guess. When you work in Hollywood, well, you're in everybody's pocket, he, right? Yeah. Well, he, he <laughs> technically wasn't in DC. They tapped him to pick up for Zack Snyder. Yeah. While, does, while he had to step I mean, away for a while. <laughs> yeah, but, but they're basically reshooting the whole movie. But uh, yeah, like seventy percent <laughs> of it. But but now, that, but there is talk that they're trying to get him to come on full time to yeah. kind of shepherd I can see it. the DCEU through their. Well, they're whatever. I mean, it's not their infancy anymore. I mean, they're a couple movies into this thing now. Yeah. Uh, but that, I mean, you've also got Patty Jenkins, who she just signed on for the second movie. She 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 just smashed a home run out of the park with Wonder Woman. It was a yeah. great movie all around. And uh, so if you can get those two locked in to kind of like be the ones that run your stuff, I think DCU has a chance of getting there. Yeah. But I can you've got, see it, but, but... But a lot of it is going to come down to the writing and how they put the stories yeah. together. And they, they've they gone back to a page one rewrite on Batman and Flash, I think, three or four times each. <laughs> you know, they've also cut Lex Luthor from the Justice League. Yes, and you know what? I'm excited about that because I don't like Jesse Eisenberg yeah, as I, Lex Luthor. I don't... I'm, I'm not saying replace him because that's a terrible thing to say and I want to see as much continuity as possible. So... Uh, in the same breath, I'm saying, Ben Affleck, stay Batman. For the love of God, if it kills you, play Batman till this is done. But if you recast Lex Luthor, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be upset. I wouldn't be at all bothered to see Jesse Eisenberg just go away. I and I, I swear to God, if Jeremy Irons isn't uh, Alfred for the duration of this, I will never watch. Anything in the DCU that would be pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked him as Alfred because he's because Jeremy Irons is still is still young enough to where he can he can do some stuff. Right. Like maybe I don't know. Like in the old like the '60s Adam West Batman, every now and again the Alfred in that show would put on the cowl and he would like drive around the Batmobile and do some crazy stuff. I could totally see Jeremy Irons doing that. Not that anything that campy would ever work in his universe, but I could totally see him getting out there, throwing a few punches, and kicking some ass. And and the and the Alfred of this universe isn't just the 
well, yes, sir, I'll make sure that we have your food ready and give you some advice here and there. He's actually like, well, you fucked your suit up, so I'm going to sit here and tinker with it. <laughs> oh, I got your flamethrower working, by the way, and we've got these gas grenades for you. So. Yeah, you ungrateful, spoiled billionaire bastard. <laughs> yeah, Alfred's, Alfred's more useful than just a butler. He is yeah. actually helping Bruce build all of his shit. He is, he is every bit essential to Batman as, as Bruce Wayne. Honestly, I re- get rid of Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. I, I cringe every time he came on my screen when I, when I watch Batman vs. Superman. It just He does good things with things like Now You See Me, where he can play the pretentious, arrogant character, and he does a really good job. And I'm not saying that necessarily means you're pretentious and arrogant, but you're just not the fit for Lex Luthor. He doesn't, he's not even super, super brilliant. He doesn't have the intelligence factor. All he all he has in Batman vs Superman is pure fucking insanity. He is just bat. He's he's Joker, but without the paint and you know guns. He's he has every time we see Lex Luthor and everything before now it's diabolical master plan. Super, you know, I'm gonna build a suit that shoots kryptonite laser beams to fight Superman. Who's going to build that suit? You know, the smartest fucking... Like, Tony Stark built... Tony Stark is the smartest billionaire in Marvel. Lex Luthor was the smartest billionaire in DC. He was the evil Iron Man, effectively. And now all we see is just a fucking insane version of a non-Joker as Lex Luthor. And it's garbage. All he is is crazy. He's not super smart. All he is is crazy. I don't like it. Yeah, it's it's not that great. No. <laughs> and he, he at least started to... He had a good uh, Lex Luthor look at the very end when they finally did the bald thing. Yeah. So maybe you could give me a younger Lex Luthor that's a little more diabolical, a little more... A little and then more like on it, maybe? Yeah, but... Maybe, but I mean, the, the whole movie, it, just, it was just... It was garbage. I, I'm not at all mad that they, that they cut him out of, of Justice League. Hopefully, them cutting him out of Justice League is not them... Necessarily getting rid of him or the character is just saying we're gonna wait until it's a suit until we do another Superman movie, and we can let him go head to head with Superman and hopefully kind of redefine Instead his of character a little more. Sideways going at Superman, yeah, and because Batman. yeah, and you can you can save that for a later movie, but but you got to get his character right before you try bringing him back because I mean even the people that liked Batman vs Batman vs Superman, the people that really liked the movie, were just like Jesse Eisenberg doesn't fit. Yeah, they're like we really like the movie. Jesse Eisenberg doesn't fit. He, he's not very good in the movie. Yeah. And when and when even the people that are strong, like on your side about that movie, didn't like it, you've really got to rethink how you've done the character. Yeah. That's my opinion. And that may or may not that you know we don't know if that's because of the way he was written or if that's because how Jesse Eisenberg decided to act it. It could be both. It just the Eisenberg doesn't fit the role as far as I'm no. concerned. They haven't done a whole lot of great writing on this whole thing to begin yeah. with. I don't know who wrote Wonder Woman, but off the top of my head, but that's one of the people they need to kind of bring in, I think, and give them a little more control. And yeah. these people that wrote like Suicide Squad or Batman vs Superman, they just kind of need to be like, uh, eh, go sit on the back bench. We'll call you if we need a one line joke or something <laughs> like that. But, yeah. but all the serious writing, you need to leave that to the people that have proven they've done it before, that they've yeah. done it well. That's what we've got for right now. We'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to drop a like if you like this video. Share it around. We'll see you next time.